Well, hey, New Life Church, welcome to our digital campus today. We're so glad you joined us. We got an exciting day for you this plan. Listen, if you're new here, we wanna welcome you. Maybe you've been here for a long time or maybe this is your first time watching our digital campus. We wanna get to know you, hear your story. And the way that we can do that is a thing called Connect. It's coming November 8th. I'm gonna be on there. I would love to get to know you. So text connect to this number and we'll get to hang out some. I'm excited today because my good friend, Pastor Darren DeLon is bringing the word. Listen, it's gonna be good. So you're gonna wanna lean in and take notes. And he's also gonna be leading us in communion as a church today. So you're gonna wanna get your communion elements ready for that at the end of the service. Listen, we're about to go into a time of worship and I wanna encourage you wherever you are, Let's maybe close our eyes. Let's maybe focus in on the Lord right now and worship God with all that we got. Come on, let me pray before we go into worship. God, I thank you so much, Lord, for who you are in our lives. God, I thank you for the way that we're growing, God, as we study the life of Christ. And Lord, I just pray today, God, that you would touch the ones that need to be touched, God, or minister to the ones that need to be ministered to that's watching. God, may your presence fill our living rooms, our cars, God, wherever we are. God, we love you with all of our hearts, but we need you desperately during these times. So be with us today as we worship you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Come on, let's worship, guys. I was lost with a broken heart Pick me up, now I'm set apart From the ash I am born again Forever saved in the Savior's hands You are more than my words could say I'll follow you, look for all my days I'll fix my eyes, follow in your way Forever free in an ending grace Cause you are, you are, you are
Hello everyone, it's great to be with all of you. My name is Darren and I'm one of the pastors here at New Life Church. I just wanna take a moment to welcome all of you and maybe you're there with your friends or maybe you're there with your family. And if you've been joining us all throughout this fall season, you know that we have been in a series called The Life of Christ. And one of the things that we learned throughout this series is that God's greatest revelation of himself was and is Jesus. As we started this series, Pastor Rick, he gave us a call to discipleship. He challenged us, what does it really mean to be a true follower of Christ by studying and also living out his teachings in our everyday life? One thing that you will see as we read throughout the Gospels is Jesus certainly had a way with his words, especially when he addressed the culture and religious questions of his day. Now, if you have your Bibles, I'm going to ask all of you to turn with me to the Gospel of Mark. And in this particular Gospel, you will see more than any other synoptic Gospels is Mark really highlights a group of people called the Pharisees and scribes. And he takes issue with them because, again, how they always was challenging Jesus' words and his teachings. So let's look at Mark chapter 2, verse 23. Verse 23 through 28, it says, Now, as it happened, as Jesus went through the grain fields on the Sabbath, and as he went, his disciples began to pluck the heads of grain. And the Pharisees were saying to him, look, why are they doing what is not lawful for the Sabbath? And he said to them, have you ever read what David did when he was in need and when he was, in, when he was hungry? And that those who were with him, he entered the house of God in the time of Abathur, the high priest, and he ate the bread of the presence which is not lawful for any but the priest to eat. And he also gave it to those that were with him. Jesus is showing them again here that human need is more important than some religious ritual. But listen to what he says in verse 27. He said unto them, The Sabbath was made for man and not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is even Lord over the Sabbath. And as Pastor Rick mentioned last week, that God gave us the Ten Commandments. And the main reason God gave us the Ten Commandments was to show us how to relate with Him, but also how to relate with one another. We know the first three commandments is all about vertical. It's God's relationship with man, man's relationship with God. But we also know the latter, the last six, are really horizontal. These are our relationships with other people and one another. But you look at that, and that's nine. Which commandment is missing? And I think this is one of the most forgotten commandments that we forget as a church and as followers of Christ. Turn with me to Exodus chapter 20. Exodus chapter 20, verse 8 and 11. And listen to what it says here. It says, remember the Sabbath. Remember the Sabbath and keep it holy. He says, six days you shall labor in all your work, but on the seventh day, it's a Sabbath to your Lord, your God. And in it, you shall not do any work, you, nor your sons, nor your daughters, which means, look, you can't take off and give all the work to your kids. But then he goes on, he says, not even your livestock working or the sojourner who is within your gates. Verse 11, in six days, the Lord made the heaven and the earth and the sea and all that is in them. And the Bible says he rested on the seventh day. Therefore, the Lord God blessed the Sabbath day and he made it holy. Now, let me just be honest with all of you here. The commandment that I struggle most with in my life, as a matter of fact, I can tell you I am guilty. This is a commandment that I have broken most of my adult life is this whole commandment on the Sabbath. I've learned the hard way, if you break this commandment, this commandment will break you. If you keep this commandment, 
This commandment will keep you. And I shouldn't even be standing here today sharing the Word of God with you if it was just, and we look back as, it was just the hand of God that has me here today because of God's grace. That's why I'm speaking to you today. I wish I would have had someone years ago when I started my ministry and started my career, someone that would look me in the eye and say, hey, slow down and remember the Sabbath. Listen, guys, I have a PhD when it comes to messing up on the Sabbath. My personality, especially those that know me, that's around me, you will know I'm driven. And if you're next to me, I'm going to try to outwork you with everything I got. I'm a type A type of personality. I do everything aggressively. All right, but seriously, when you look at my personality, it really became my identity. And basically what happened with that it caused a lot of problems in my own life. And we're going to come back to that. But let's get back to the Sabbath. He says, remember the Sabbath. What does the Sabbath mean? As we study this and we go through the Word, we'll see there's three things that stand out with the Sabbath. The first thing we see that Sabbath comes from the Hebrew word Shabbat that really means this, to rest. Rest is God's design. Rest is God's blessing. However, I don't know if you've noticed with your friend, but we really treat that word like a four-letter word. Well, I, after you think about it, I guess rest is a four-letter word. But think about this. If you're hanging out with your buddies and you ask your buddy, man, look, how are you doing this week? Most likely that person's going to say, man, I'm busy. I'm working hard. What if they looked at you and said, I'm just rested, man. What if they looked at you and said, hey, man, I'm coming off this week, three naps. We would look at that person differently. As a matter of fact, we would judge them. For me, I know I would probably look at them and say, man, you a straight up bum, man. But when you think about this, God is saying, look, the Sabbath is, means rest. It's a blessing for you. Another word that we use for the Sabbath is this word that's interchangeable, and it comes from the word that basically means this, to stop. I want you to think about that. When's the last time you just stopped? To stop working, to stop worrying, to stop wanting? God has said, look, the Sabbath is a day for you to stop, to cease from your working. And I love this whole part about the Sabbath because what we see early on in time at creation, God gave this unique rhythm for the earth and for all God's creation to follow. It was a regular rhythmic time of rest, a healthy rhythm that God says, hey, this is how I want you to do life. And here's the rhythm that God gave us. He said, work six days and take the seventh day off. In other words, work, 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 and then enjoy the rest. For some of you, it might be rest, 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 and maybe a little bit of work. But look, that's a whole nother sermon for another weekend. But what makes rhythm so unique, I want y'all to catch this, is that you got to know when to stop. What makes rhythm so unique, you got to know when to stop. If you don't stop, especially in music, basically instead of music, you have noise. And sometimes we see that. I want to ask any of you, have you ever seen Pastor Harry Bates try to clap or sing? That brother has no rhythm at all. Why? Because he don't know when to stop. So God says, look, the Sabbath is all about rest. He says the Sabbath is all about stopping, but let's go back again and look at Genesis chapter 2, and we'll see the third thing about the Sabbath. And here it is, it says in Genesis chapter 2, verse 2 and 3, it says, On the seventh day, God finished his work that he done. And listen what it says. It says, God, he rested. God stopped on the seventh day, and here's what it says, from all the work that he had done. So God blessed the seventh day. The Bible says he made it holy because on it God rested from all his work and all that he'd done 
in creation. We see a rhythm here that God established. God worked six days. He created everything in the universe, and then he took a well day off. Why did God take a day off? When you think about God, it's not because he was tired. God don't get tired. But I think when we look at this, we see that God was working. And finally, on the seventh day, when I look at this, he breathed in after breathing out. We know that he spoke the word those six days. Six days, he, he, he breathed breath into man. But on the seventh day, he breathed in, and here's the other part of the Sabbath. He enjoyed his creation. Listen, that's a new revelation to me because I'm not always the type that stops just to enjoy something. When you look back at this and you will see, God wants you to enjoy your relationship with him. He wants you to enjoy your family. No matter what stage you're in right now with your kids, whether they're in diapers or whether your kids are getting married, God wants you to enjoy those moments. God also wants you just to enjoy the creation, the blessing that he's given us. See, this is Sabbath. God is showing me, church, right now, really for the first time in my life, what it means to rest, what it means to stop, and what it means to enjoy all that God has blessed me with. And so here's a practical question for you. Maybe you're sitting here watching with a friend or a family member. I want you to think about this. When is the last time you simply stopped, you took a deep breath, you unplugged from your work, you unplugged from your phone, you rested and enjoyed your relationship with God. I want to ask you to write this down and I want you to catch this because I think it's very important. And that is, I'm just trying to pass for you for a moment in right here. But listen to what I wrote down here. The condition of our life is the result of the way that we live our life. Now that sounds so simple, but let me say it again. The condition of our life is a result of the way that we live our life. Now, back to my story, and i got to tell you what this COVID season has shown me more than anything is it showed me that, that I was out of rhythm with God. I was out of rhythm with my God, my Savior, Jesus Christ. Not only that, I was out of rhythm at times with my wife and, and my family. I told you earlier, I got, I got a PhD in breaking this Sabbath thing, man. And the reason is, is, Ever since I was little, I was taught, man, you work. You work. You work hard. Why? Because of your name. You're a DeLon. It's called integrity. It's called work ethic. I was motivated by early in my career by a particular coach. Many of you may have heard of Vince Lombardi. I had his quotes all in my office, and my wife can attest to this. Here's just a few of the quotes I try to live by. To achieve success, whatever the job, we have and we must pay a price. What's that price you're paying right now? Another quote, I even had a plaque with this one on my desk. And it said this, you're either a steamroller or you're part of the pavement. That's tense, guys. And the last quote, and I've been here, guys. I firmly believe that at any man or woman's finest hour, the greatest fulfillment that all he or she holds dear is the moment when he or she has worked their heart out in a good cause and they lie exhausted on the field of battle, victorious. Now, when you read these, you think, man, that's a great way to live your life by because it's talking about grit. It's talking about work ethic. It's talking about success and accomplishing things. But look, that sounds good until you take that and you mix it with my personality type and also you mix it, which I learned about my ism. Now, y'all don't look at me as you're looking around here and think, man, look, what's this ism thing? We all have isms. As a matter of fact, I think you're going to see here today that some of you 
are going to see that God's going to show you there's some things that are out of place right now in your life. Now, what about me? What are some things that I can relate with you? And I just want to be honest here this weekend. Listen, guys, I know what it's like to hit burnout. I know what it's like to hit that wall, going along life fast, giving everything I got, and all of a sudden just being slammed up against the wall until there's nothing left. I know what it's like to give everything to work, and when I get home, have nothing to give my family. Burnout. I know what it's like to sacrifice many relationships on the altar of work or on the altar of quote, quote, ministry. For what? Burnout. Are you burnout today? For some of you, maybe you can relate to me. I know what it's like to carry heavy burdens. Most of my life, I've, I've tried to stand in that gap and try to take the load of others, trying to be loyal. But here's the thing I've learned. You can't take the burden of others if you're not giving it to God in prayer. The burdens. What burdens you today? What burden are you carrying? I know for me, I have chronic back pain. I've had six back surgeries. And I used to pride myself of lifting heavy weights. I mean, you can tell, right? But one thing when I would lift heavy weights, it was all about my ego. I was always about competing and say, man, I can beat that person. But here's what I've learned. Burdens will wear you down. And I know for me, the burden of even the others broke me. Not only do I know what it's like to hit burnout, carry heavy burdens, but I also know what it's like to live off of adrenaline. I'm going to tell you guys, I was addicted to adrenaline. I was restless. No sleep. Some of you may not even believe this, but it is documented. My resting heart rate at one point was 160 beats per minute. And trust me, I'm not bragging on this. One day, my body said no. If you don't say no, eventually your body's going to tell you no. And trust me on this. I know what it's like to look back at my life and wonder, what did I do all this for? A couple of years ago, my wife and my two kids, they found me on the floor. And it wasn't just burnout. It wasn't just because I was having heaviness with burdens. It's because my heart flatlined. Listen, guys, are you carrying a burden? Are you going through life so fast and all of a sudden you're hitting a wall? Let me tell you right now, God wants to give you rest today. That's what the Sabbath is all about. The metrics of our culture, the way that our culture measures success is skewed. It's a lie. Listen to what Scripture says in Matthew chapter 16, verse 26. He says, what good will it be? I want you to think about this. For someone to gain the whole world, but yet forfeit their soul. Or what can anyone give in exchange for their soul? Now, my kids will tell you there's a Delonism in our house, and that is I always say to every benefit, there's a cost. And you got to be able to weigh that cost and say, is that benefit worth the cost? What's the cost of success right now in your life? Listen, church. I've learned that you can gain the whole church and lose your soul. I've learned that you can gain just success and career and still lose your soul. You can gain all the accolades and all the things that are out there in this Western culture, but still lose what's most important. That's your relationship with God, your relationship with others, and for me, ultimately, it was my health. Ecclesiastes chapter 6, verse 7. It says, we work to feed our appetites. But meanwhile, listen to what it says here. Our souls go hungry. Why? For many of us, it's the fear of not having enough or it's the fear of losing what we have. Sabbath. 
We're talking about rest. We're talking about stopping. We're talking about enjoying the blessing of God. But the Sabbath, I'll tell you, is also about just totally trusting Him. Rest equals faith. Stopping equals faith. Enjoyment equals faith. Early in this year, as we began to kick off 2020, I'll never forget coming home, and one evening my wife said, hey, Darren, let's sit down. And I could tell it wasn't just the normal voice of, hey, let's sit down, but I could tell she was hurt. I could tell something was bothering her. And she sat me down right there at our dining room table. And she looked at me and she says, Darren, it's got to stop. Darren, this is not how God has called you or us to live. You're going too fast. You're not honoring God by taking a day off. And I sat there and I listened to her. I saw the pain in her eyes. And I reflected. And then from there, I, I, I flew off on a mission trip. And while I was on this mission trip, that's when COVID hit. Pastor Rick was taking a sabbatical. There was a lot of things going on with the church. I came back from this flight. We started getting things going in this COVID season with the church and making all the different decisions and changes. And with a week of that, I found myself back in the hospital, back having another back surgery. Remember what I said earlier? If you break the Sabbath, it will break you. Listen, church, I know what it's like to be broken. I know what it's like. And I just want to tell you, man, after my back surgery, it wasn't long, just a few weeks after that, my surgeon called me. And he's now a close friend of mine. He says, hey, I want you to come to the clinic. And this is before my checkup. So I said, man, what's up? He says, no, I just want you to come to the clinic. Meet me out in the parking lot. So I pulled up, and he came out in the scrubs and everything and hopped in my truck, and he looked at me. And he says, Darren, this back issue, you know what it is. And I said, yeah, man, I know. I used to lift weights and sports. I got in a wreck. I know all the challenges. He says, no, 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 no. He said, the issue is stress, man. The issue is your burden. The issue is you're at burnout. And he looked at me and he says, what are you going to do to change this? And I'm going to tell you, that moment shook me in my truck. And I'll never forget driving back. And here's the thing I realize. I have an ism. And I realize that I'm a holic, not an alcoholic, but I'm a workaholic. And driving back to Conway that day, I'm going to tell you, the Lord just started moving on my heart. And I realized, God, something has to change this year. I can no longer keep doing this in my life. And from there, the, the question is not what holic you are. It's why. And I had to drill down and say, why am I always doing these things? And I'm going to tell you, over the past few months, the Lord has done an incredible work. It's been hard. It's been tough. But I'm learning what Sabbath is. Let me just tell you, it saved my life, man. I want to do a little quiz for you. And, and if this relates to you, I want you just to raise, you can do it right there. Join with me. You raise your hand. Be truthful too. No, no cheating with this. But I go through these questions. Just raise your hand. Number one, are you always in a hurry? Are you rushed? Come on, come on, raise your hand. Do you use your day off as a day just to catch up with unfinished work? Has more than one person ever told you to, hey, bro, it's time to, time to slow down, man? Do you get mad or frustrated or easily annoyed at people that are close to you? Have you kicked the dog or kicked the cat for no reason? Do you feel disconnected from your identity and your calling? Do you feel disconnected from God or even disconnected from your own soul? Has this COVID season showed you that, man, it's hard for you to find rest? It's hard for you to just sit in stillness and enjoy the presence of God. But I want you to see something here today. 
Jesus again. Listen to his words. We're talking about Sabbath. We're talking about, hey, how do you stop? How do you rest? How do you enjoy what God has blessed you with? And I want you to catch this. It's one of the last verses we're going to read here. But look what Jesus said in Matthew chapter 11, verse 28 and 29. He said, come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. What's the key to the Sabbath? We go back to Mark chapter 2 in the latter part of that verse. Jesus said this. He says, I am Lord of the Sabbath. If you want to find rest, it's Jesus. If you want to learn how to stop and take a moment, it's all about Jesus. Listen, if you want to enjoy the life and the things God's blessed you, it's walking with Jesus. It's being a follower of Christ. Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened. I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. And in verse 30, my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Listen, church, it's hard to imagine any other time in our life that we've experienced the chaos that we're seeing in this world. It's hard to imagine any other time where the condition and the pressures of this war- world is just constantly heavy on us. Here's the invitation. You want rest? You want peace? Jesus says, I'm the answer. So as we close here, I just want to challenge you with three things when it comes back down to this Sabbath. Here's how you take a real Sabbath. Number one, come to Jesus. It's the invitation. You don't just do this once. You do it every single day where you take time and you have literally a moment with Jesus. Many of you are doing that right now. Every morning at 6 o'clock, you're having that Sabbath time, that rest time. You're stopping and communing with Jesus. It's not just simply studying His Word, but it's stopping and letting His Word change the direction of your life. That's called repentance. Look, Sabbath renews your spirit. Come to Jesus. Secondly, connect with Jesus. And I love this particular uh, type here that we see as he talks about the yoke. And that's all about the exchange. Jesus says this, we must take up his yoke. Now, when you read that, you might think, what in the world does yoke mean? But back in those days, as they would teach, it was called the yoke of the rabbi. It's all about discipleship. And he was saying, look, if you're going to be my follower, here's the yoke I want you to take on. In other words, you exchange the way you live your life and you take on the lifestyle of Jesus. Sabbath means to connect with Jesus. Sabbath is a time where you reset your soul. You know, I have my phone right here. And it's amazing a lot of times when this phone don't work, sometimes I get so aggravated with it. And then somebody there in the office will be really smart, Alec, and they'll say, hey, have you thought about just turning it off? And I look at them, I'm like, there's nothing going to happen with that. And all of a sudden, they grab my phone, they turn it off, they turn it back on, and what happens? It resets. That's Sabbath. You stop, you reset, and you connect with Jesus. And the last thing, you let Jesus change you. That's the transformation. The Sabbath, guys, has changed me during this season. Listen, for the first time in a long time, I feel like I'm the Darren DeLon that God's created me to be. And it's so good when I look at my wife and in her eyes, she's saying, I see change in you. I see God doing something in you. See, when Jesus changes you, he wants to refresh you physically, spiritually, and emotionally. Jesus has given that invitation this weekend. Jesus is saying, I have a better way. Exchange your life, the way of the world, the way of success, the way of all these things. And he says, look, exchange it for my way of living. And that's called Sabbath. Matthew chapter 11, again, verse 28 and 30. I just want to read this to you as we get ready to take communion. Though 
And this is a different translation. This is Eugene Peterson. And listen to what he says here. Again, going back to those questions we said earlier. He says, are you tired? Are you worn out? Are you burned out? Come to me. Get away with me and you will recover your life. He says, I'll show you how to take a real rest, a Sabbath rest. Then he talks about discipleship here. Walk with me, work with me, watch how I do it. That's what being a disciple is all about. And then he says here, learn the unforth rhythms of grace. Remember we talked about that rhythm? And that rhythm's all about having a time where you can stop. And he says here, I won't lay anything heavy or ill-fitting on you. Keep company with me. That's what we're about to do with communion as we remember him. And he says, you'll learn to live freely in life. I just want to take a moment as we close and you have your Bibles there. Maybe you can close them out. And If you don't mind, I just want to pray with you here today. Because I know that some of you are tired. I know some of you maybe hit a wall like maybe you can relate to what I went through in my own life. Maybe some of you had a place of unrest and you're, you're burnt out. You feel like you're running on empty. Maybe with your relationship with God. Maybe with your family. Maybe even with work. But here's the thing I want to encourage you with. God wants to refresh you today. So right where you are, if you don't mind, just bow your head. I just want to pray over us. And remember the first thing I said, the first step, it's all about repentance. And that just simply means to come to Jesus, to turn to him. So God, we just thank you for this weekend. We thank you for your word on Sabbath. And God, we just ask you right now that all of us take a moment and just stop. All of us take a moment right now and just search our heart. Lord, your word says in Corinthians that before we take communion, it's a time where we really examine ourselves. God, we want to love you. We want to be right with you. And so God, right now, I just pray your peace. I pray your joy. And Lord God, I pray your freedom over every person that's listening right now. And God, I pray that all of us will embrace what it truly means to be a follower of Jesus. And that means to do it his way. It means to rest on the Sabbath. That means to stop working on the Sabbath. And that means to enjoy the Sabbath. God, I thank you for your word. In Jesus' name, amen. I'm just going to ask all of you, if you're there in your home, or earlier Pastor Kevin, he asked all of you to grab some elements there. And What we want to do is we want to take communion. Again, what I love about communion, it's very similar to what we just talked about. Because communion is always about remembering. It's for us to, to look back at what God's done for us. It's for us to look around us and just see the blessing of God. And it's also for us to remember to look ahead because of eternity. So I'm just going to ask you to take the elements there if you have them. And, the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, it says, For what I receive from the Lord, I also deliver to you. And the Lord Jesus, it says, on the night that he was betrayed, he took the bread. I'm going to ask you to take the bread. This bread represents his body. And I want you to think about all that Jesus has done for you. He who knew no sin became sin for us. He took on your pain. He took on your sorrow. And the Bible says, and when he gave thanks, he broke it. And he said, this is my body, which is for you. Let's take together. The Bible says in the same manner, he took the cup. And as he took the cup, he says, listen, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. I want you to think about what Jesus shed his blood for he shed it for your sin, but he also shed it for you to truly have a relationship with him. He shed his blood for you to have healing in your life. And wherever you are right now, if you need God to touch an area of your life, just ask him right now in this special moment. God will do that. 
He says, this is the cup of the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Let's partake. The church, I'm just going to ask all of you right there if you want to put aside the elements and just get still before God. And we're going to go back into worship. And as we go back into worship, I just want to encourage you. Let Jesus, let him touch you. Let him change you in this moment. In Jesus' name, let's worship the Lord here. This is my worship. This is my offering. In every moment, I withhold nothing I'm learning to trust you Even when I can't see it And even in suffering I have to believe it If you say it's wrong then I'll say no If you say release I'm letting go If you're in it with me I'll begin when you say to jump I'm diving in if you say be still then I will wait if you say to trust I will obey I don't want to follow my own ways I'm done chasing feelings spirit lead me oh spirit Felt like a burden, but once I could grasp it, you took me further, further than I was asking. And simply to see you is worth it all. My life is an altar, lay your fire for. Say be still, then I will wait. If you say to trust, I will obey. Teach me how to follow in your way. I'm done chasing feelings. Spirit, be me.
say is wrong, then I'll say no. If you say release, I'm letting go. If you're in it with me, I'll begin. When you say to jump, I'm diving in. If you say be still, then I will wait. If you say to trust, I will obey. You're the only truth of life, the way. I'm done chasing feelings. Man, what a powerful word that was today and a great reminder for us about the Sabbath. Listen, you might have made a decision to follow Christ today for your first time or maybe you're rededicating your life to Him. We want to follow up with you and help you as much as you'll let us. Listen, if you'll text next to this number right here, we'll love to follow up with you. Maybe give you some insight, maybe pray for you or get you on this journey following Christ. Our team would love to to do that. Well, right now we're gonna take our tithes and offerings. And the cool thing is you can give right here and you can give straight to the digital campus and help us reach more people for Christ. And we just wanna say thank you as you do that. But if you're connected to a campus in your city here in Arkansas, make sure that you give to that campus. But you can also give to the digital campus as well. And as we close today, I wanna pray for Pastor Rusty Bland at First Assembly in Searcy and I also want to pray a prayer of blessing over you today. So Father, right now, God, we thank you for Pastor Rusty there in First Assembly, Searcy, Arkansas. God, I pray that you just bless that church, God. I pray that you encourage uh, Pastor Rusty today. And God, I also just pray a prayer of blessing over everybody watching today. God, as we're going through crazy times, Lord, through election seasons and a pandemic and all the things that we've been facing these past several months and we're facing right now, Lord, I just pray for encouragement to hit us, Lord. I pray that you would just surround us, God, with your love and your peace, God. Give us discernment during these times, Lord. God, lift our heads, God, to know what is the right thing to do, God. And may we focus on you today like never before. God, we love you. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Listen, Life of Christ Devos are still coming. If you have not been a part of our Life of Christ, sign up right here. Just text Jesus to this number. But also, we're doing Connect November 8th. We would love to get to know who you are, so text that number as well. And I can't wait to reach out to you. It's gonna be amazing. Listen, have an awesome week. God bless you. We'll see you right back here next week at 9.30.